When you look at certain teams and what they did in the NFL draft, it was clear they came in on a mission. No other team in this entire draft exemplifies that more than the Denver Broncos. They knew they needed weapons for Drew Locke, they had one of the best wide receivers in the entire draft vault in the 15, and they aggressively took him and a second receiver with their second round pick as well. Looking over this draft, the Broncos taking Jerry Judy with the 15th overall pick was one of my favorite selections in the first round. Now, we already talked about CeeDee Lamb on this channel and why he was a great choice for the Cowboys. And like them, the Broncos taking Judy was also a great pick. In this video, I want to show you what I saw on film, and I want to show you why I think Drew Locke should be ecstatic about Judy coming to Denver. The first thing you notice when you turn on his film is just how excellent of a route runner he is. The way he stems his routes, the way he releases up the line of scrimmage, and the way he understands leverage is just excellent to see. The moment he steps on the field, he should be a difference maker for this team. His ability to create natural separation should endear him to the entire coaching staff and get him a lot of opportunities early. I want to show you a few examples just so you can see how impressive he is at stemming his routes. He has precise footwork, he knows how to use his routes to create leverage, and he knows how to use subtle head fakes with a nasty dead leg jab step that breaks his opponent's ankles. Check out this play against LSU in the first quarter. After lining up in pistol with three receivers to the left, Alabama motioned Judy across the formation. Based on how the defense reacted, it's clear they were in a pattern match zone defense before the motion and then adjusted covering man to man on the outside afterwards. Judy ran a blaze out route on this play. This route takes incredible ankle and hip mobility, and it takes precise footwork to execute. There are very few wide receivers that have this ability, and Judy enters the NFL with this route already mastered. Let's look at it closely. Judy starts by running vertically, accelerating before his first cut. He then jab steps down, aiming towards the center of the defense on what appears to be a slant route. The cornerback starts to open his hips towards the middle of the field, and this is where Judy already has him beat. Judy then dropped his hips parallel to the ground and then flipped his body back towards the opposite sideline. The defender was caught biting on that initial break, and Judy was open for a big game with a well-thrown ball. This is where Tua should have thrown it. However, he failed to release it, not giving Judy a chance. Instead of throwing with anticipation to trust his receiver, Tua held onto it and he waited for another receiver to clearly get open on his over route. If Tua just trusted him like I said, Alabama would have gotten an additional 5 yards and maybe more if Judy could beat the safety down the sideline. Now, after going through his film, what really impressed me was that this route and this ability was not a one-time thing. The way Judy set up his defender was absolutely incredible. It's easily his best trait. He would constantly use well-timed stems with a nice head fake in order to open his defender for a cut. I stopped counting the number of times I saw a defender hit the floor simply due to his route running. Judy consistently embarrassed defenders with his ankle-breaking abilities. What I really like about him as a player is that Judy has the talent to win against defenders without the help from his scheme. He knows how to create hesitation on in and out breaking routes, and he can be trusted to win early in order to give Drew Locke a target to throw to. Also, once he breaks, Judy really drifts on his routes, and he forms a direct line to keep a defender at bay. It's clear that he practices over and over again, and Judy can bring all these talents to Denver on day one. Now, similar to that play against LSU that I showed you a minute ago, there were so many opportunities where Tua simply missed him as I went through his film. It was infuriating to watch. Judy has such a strong capability to win and find space between zones that he should be the feature target of his offense. Now, I do get that Alabama has talent left and right. They had two first round picks this year in Henry Ruggs Jr. and Jerry Judy, and they'll likely have two more next year in Devontae Smith and Jalen Waddle. I get that. I get that Alabama didn't want to focus on any one player because they simply didn't have to. But, in my opinion, when you have the likes of a guy like Judy, who won the Blitnikoff Award as the best wide receiver in the country as a sophomore, I think he deserves the extra focus. Based on my film study, that surprisingly didn't happen as much as I wanted. Alabama didn't game plan to his skill set nearly as much as I would hope for. Even when Judy would win on his routes against man or zone coverage, oftentimes his quarterback would look the other way. For example, on a post route out of the slot, Judy had his man beat. This could have been a 40 yard touchdown because his safety jumped on another receiver. Literally, if Tua placed the ball anywhere that I'm showing you my screen, he has the speed and the separation ability to bring it in for the big play. Now again, Tua did complete this pass to Henry Ruggs Jr., so I can't blame him for taking the 15-yard play. That's not lost on me. However, with a receiver like Judy, this is an easy throwing situation for a quarterback like Drew Locke. He likely won't have as many wide-open receivers as Tua routinely did just because the talent disparity isn't there. Moving on, we've talked about his route running abilities and how he can stem routes and break them off with clean footwork better than pretty much anybody else in this class. Now, let's talk about some of the areas where Judy needs to improve. The first thing I noticed was that Judy dropped a few too many passes for my liking. On his 84 catchable targets last season, he had 7 drops representing an 8.3% drop rate. This is below average as compared to his peers. Now, it's not horrible, but it's certainly not the best. One thing I noticed was that the vast majority of these drops came over the middle of the field. 
After watching them closely, I think it's more of a concentration thing as opposed to anything else though. The second weakness that I saw was his level of effort on running plays. There are certain receivers that take pride in their run blocking skills. They take pride attacking a DB head on with force and they take pride making key blocks down the field. This unfortunately doesn't describe Judy. His level of effort and frankly his willingness to block on runs is pretty bad. He rarely put in the effort that I think he should have and oftentimes he wouldn't even engage with the guy who's supposed to on the play. While this is far from a deal breaker for me personally, I just want it to be known that I doubt he'll be making many key blocks for Philip Lindsay on the outside next season. Outside of drops and run blocking effort, the third area of weakness was that Judy needs to become more physical in his routes. At times he would get bumped by a linebacker or by a cornerback and it would throw him off. He needs to get better at using his hands to fend off the more physical cornerbacks that he'll face on a week by week basis in the NFL. Unlike college where many teams play zone coverage, the NFL is full of press coverage teams and that'll take advantage of his lack of physicality. I see arm bars and jersey tugs in his future, and while yes, some of these are illegal, not everything will be called. He simply needs to get better at using his hands to stay clean. The final thing I'm going to bring up is that while Judy does have 4-4 speed, he isn't the best as a fade route runner down the sideline. At times, he'll take some extended releases, and he won't fully threaten horizontally as much as he should. Doing this will create hesitation off the line of scrimmage and will allow him to showcase that speed. Based on my tracking, this shows up when he faces press coverage as well. Now, similar to C.D. Lamb and what I said in that video, this is an area that he needs to improve on as he admittedly didn't face a ton of in college. In my opinion, Judy is much better suited as a future slot or flanker receiver where he can get motion around creating mismatches. This is how I'd use him and I hope the Broncos do the same. Overall, when you compare him to the past Alabama wide receivers like the Julio Joneses or the Amari Coopers of the world, Judy doesn't exactly look the part of some of these guys. He's a bit leggy, he has a high center of gravity, and simply put, his body seems a bit maxed out in terms of adding strength and muscle, which one would argue limits his upside. While this may be the case, Judy is still in that upper tier of receivers coming out. There's a lot to like about him, and it starts with his route running. Judy is a high floor prospect that on day one offers a ton of value to the Broncos. You put him on post routes, dig routes, and over routes, and with Cortland Sutton lining up outside and KJ Hamler running underneath, and I promise you that he'll create yards in this offense. There's no doubt in my mind that he has the upside to be a thousand yard receiver by his second season, and he may even do it as a rookie. When you're as good as he is at stemming routes and creating natural separation that you don't need a scheme for, you're guaranteed to make some big plays at the next level. Well, that's all I have for you. In my next film room on this channel, we'll make our way into some of my off-season content, breaking down some of the players we all know and love. I have a full slate of video topics for you, and I think you're really going to enjoy them. If you liked my work, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Also, you can find me on Twitter at Samuel R. Gold.